Control valve installation practices are described in X's 3-6-2, piping at control valve stations. X's 15-9-1, control valves. API RP-550, installation of refinery instruments and control systems, valve specification sheets, and installation sketches. X is 3-6-2-1A, section 3.2, states that automatic control valves shall be installed in horizontal lines with the valve actuators above the valves. Butterfly valves shall be installed with the shafts horizontal, except in cryogenic services where the shaft shall be vertical. Section 3.3 is very important. It states that accessibility and clearance shall be provided above and below control valves. It is virtually impossible to work on a control valve if you can't get at it. Section 3.4 states that block and bypass valves shall be provided for all control and safety shutdown valves in accordance with Table 2. Table 2 in this standard covers the block valve and bypass valve size for a given mainline size. The function of the block and bypass valves is to permit removal of the control valve for maintenance without shutting down the unit. Some control valve installations do not have blocks or bypasses. In all cases where the block and bypass valves are not used, the control valve should be equipped with a continuously connected side-mounted hand wheel. Control valves in steam lines to pump drivers do not require a bypass or blocks. Applications where it is desirable to reduce the leak source of hazardous fluids such as hydrogen, phenol, and acid do not require a bypass or blocks. In slurry or particulate services, such as lime or fluid catalyst, the process media will plug any line where there is no flow. This would render the bypass useless, so it is omitted in these types of service. Bypasses and blocks are omitted in clean, mild services such as water. They are omitted when their omission will not jeopardize the safety or operability of the unit. Exxon Engineering Standard 3-6-2-1A also states that a drain valve shall be installed upstream of the control valve and downstream of any block valve. The drain is a very important safety item. It provides for depressuring of the valve for maintenance or removal. API Report 550 mentions that care should be taken so the drain does not release or splash a flammable material on hot lines and cause a fire. Make sure that the drain on a gas regulator is far enough away from any ignition sources so that ignition will not occur. An example would be a fuel gas regulator on a furnace. Elevated valves with drains are a hazard to anyone who might be in the immediate area. The release of a hazardous material such as acid is very dangerous. A strong wind can blow the acid to other locations. Piping the drain material to a safe location can remove the accident potential from the three previous examples. Now work exercise one in your workbook.
Another Exxon engineering standard we should be familiar with is 15-9-1, entitled Control Valves. This engineering standard covers mandatory requirements governing the design, fabrication, and inspection of all valves used for control. Let's look at some important sections of 15-9-1. The lubricator should be installed where it can be reached. The valve packing box shall be threaded and fitted with a one-quarter inch NPS steel plug if a lubricator is not supplied. Care should be taken that the fins or extensions are not insulated, otherwise it would defeat the purpose of a finned extension. Two-way control valves shall have equal percentage characteristics. Except valves used in combining or diverting service shall have linear characteristics. Characterized positioners may be used to meet this requirement. Gas compressor recycle control valves shall have linear characteristics. A specific example explaining combining or diverting service is a TRC controlling two butterfly valves. The TRC routes flow either through or around the exchanger to obtain the proper outlet temperature. It must not alter the flow rates. Both valves must have linear characteristics, since one is AO and one is AC. The manufacturer identification of each port of a three-way valve body shall be permanently steel stamped on the edge of each flange. Under additional requirements for butterfly valves, it states that the shaft shall have keyways cut to allow action of the valve to be changed and vein position shall be indicated by an engraved marking parallel to the vein on the end of the shaft. Without an external vein position indicator, it is impossible to tell if a butterfly valve is open or closed. Section 5.19 states that the direction of flow shall be indicated on the valve. Section 9.1 states that control valves must be tagged with identifying information. In addition to meeting the criteria set forth in the Exxon Engineering Standards, some control valve installations have special instructions pertaining to the valve installations. The special instructions are found on the valve specification sheet. For instance, TV901A-1-2 has a new IP transducer. It shows the IP is mounted with TV901B. LV901A, specifications 1 through 5, special instruction number 3 states that local indicators F-901 and L-901 will be located beside the valve. This is the actual installation. Here are the two local indicators. Installation sketches are also useful and should be consulted. API Report 550 states that the control valve manifold should be arranged to provide flexibility for removing control valves. Flexibility is also necessary to prevent stresses from being introduced into the body of the valve. Stress in the valve body can distort seats and prevent a positive shutoff. API Report 550 mentions a few other significant points about manifold piping arrangements. Section 6.5D states that the piping around control valves should be self-supporting. 
or should be permanently supported so that when the control or block valve is removed, the lines will remain in place. A final item about inspection. Check the overall environment. All actuators contain rubber in diaphragms or relays. They cannot tolerate temperatures above 180 degrees Fahrenheit. This limitation implies that you should not mount an actuator inside or near a very hot process vessel or line. Be certain that signal tubing and air supply piping is adequately braced and supported. See if the control valve has an instrument signal gauge. The gauge can be in a positioner or it can be external. The installation should also have a supply gauge if air supply is used. The supply air must be clean, dry, and non-corrosive. See if all the flange bolts are installed. And look between flanges to verify that the gasket is in its proper place. Now work exercise two in your workbook.